Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico. And if you're new, we ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, and I'm not so sure. So today, we're going to hit up Mitski. I hit up Mitski on episode 120, Your Best American Girl, I think it was called. And she put out a new album about six weeks ago and going to do this song, as you saw from the thumbnail, uh, Bug Like an Angel. So it's a song about alcohol or drinking or relationship to alcohol. And I'm not sure if the official video here is going to shed some light, but uh, always an in interesting subject for me. So if you like what we're doing here, uh, celebrating the music of the 21st century, playing the really good stuff and making a case for modern music and indie rock and all that, hit that like or subscribe button. It really helps. And let's go. I probably will stop at once to modify the content because sometimes when I do an, uh, an official video, it's it gets blocked. Acoustic guitar, okay. Such a simple skeletal song. I mean, it really surprised me because, you know, I'm used to, you know, when I remember the other song, I, I, th I think it had a lot of programming and beats. And, you know, as I recall, I mean, I didn't play that song beforehand. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, the, now on the video, we'll talk about the video first. I mean, 
that's such an over the top sort of drunk performance there. I've seen a lot of people <laughs> drunk in my day, and I, I don't know if I quite saw that. By the way, I was at a party one time back when they had record players. Yeah. And it was in Hawaii. It's great. It's an awesome party. About 7,500 people there. And this guy fell on the turntable. <laughs> Half the people left. I, it's, a, it's a great way to break up a party. Fall on the turntable. <laughs> anyway, it was... Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of drunk people, but not usually like this. So I was unconvinced by this performance. But, you know, I really liked when the uh, choir came in. They were all in robes. I mean, that was really cool. And then they cut to her in the middle, and she's just kind of deadpan singing the song. And what I like about the lyrics here is the lyrics are not pro or anti. They seem to be very neutral, just descriptive, and I like that. So it's got a nice melody. I like it. I um, Man, this can be really hard to rate. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put some bonus material on. There's a 13-minute video of her describing what the song means. And, and I played just a snippet of it. And she says, for those of you who don't want to know the writer's meaning behind the song, you can turn the video off and that's fine. And so I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to... I guess the rating I'm going to give this is uh, probably a B plus. Um, I like it. I like it a lot, but it, it doesn't seem special, if you know what I mean. Like something that I'm going to come back to and play over and over again. But yeah, no, no complaints about the song. It was just very simple with that acoustic guitar and then I think a little bit of keyboard in there and not much, right? It's very simple. So I'll bet on the album it sounds really good. It probably uh, goes with the flow of the album. So that's it. Thanks for joining me. And uh, we will go ahead and play this uh, bonus material. And if you want to hang on, you can watch it. I'll put the link to it as well. So uh, let's see what she has to say about this. Yeah, the video had really cool parts and kind of goofy parts. Hi, this is Mitski, and I'm going to talk about how I wrote the song called Bug Like an Angel. Fair warning, it's going to get pretty nerdy. I'm going to talk about stuff like chord progressions, what went into specific lyrical choices, if that's not your jam, if you don't want to hear about it, this might not be the video for you. Or if you're like me and sometimes you don't want to hear an artist's intention behind a song because you want to decide what the song means to you, that's totally fair. So this might be the video to skip. I don't know. Anyway, disclaimer over. Bug Like an Angel starts with these four chords in this order. D flat major, A flat major, E flat major, B flat major, and it's gonna stay in that sequence for basically the rest of the song except for one time, which we'll go over later. And I wanted all the chords to just keep going in that progression because this song is about addiction and I wanted to show musically somehow that addiction is basically a cycle you're just kind of stuck in this repetitive over and over it doesn't end so that's the intention behind having the same chords over and over it's interesting so we have that chord progression twice as an intro and Hopefully that leads the listener to think, okay, I get it. The D flat is the first chord. That's how it goes. And then I wanted to do a little twist, a little change, a little surprise by actually having the vocals come in in the middle of what we think is the chord progression at um, A flat major instead. So there's a bow. Stuck to the bottom. And I want.
wanted to do that because I wanted to give a feeling of being off balance. Because again, this is a song about addiction and that's not exactly a balanced state. And I wanted to figure out ways to express that state musically. So the first lyrics are, there's a bug like an angel stuck to the bottom of my glass with a little bit left. I like to start songs, not always, but sometimes it's useful to start songs with descriptions so that you can hopefully immediately paint a picture in your listener's head. For this, I wanted to paint a picture of someone drinking something out of a glass and there's a little bit left in the glass and they're drinking like this and they realize there's a bug stuck at the bottom of their glass and because it's stuck like this at the bottom and they're raising it, it looks like there's an angel in the sky. And since we get later on in the song, we get more into things like God, the devil, etc. I wanted to open the song with imagery of an angel to sort of set the tone. Okay, so we have a description. After the description, I wanted the protagonist to say something about themselves, to like introduce themselves. So. As I got older, I learned I'm a drinker. Sometimes a drink feels like family. Family. That's the, That's the first best big part. jump scare. Yeah. And you know, I love jump scares in my songs. <laughs> um, out of nowhere, a choir comes. I'm, I'm quite proud of that. I really like that part. Um, mm -hmm. And I also wanted that to be the first big emotional moment, saying the word family with a whole choir out of nowhere. I just wanted to evoke that sort of intensity with a choir as well. And then we go back to the chord progression. And then the second verse. Hey, what's the matter looking like your sticker? So now we've had a description of the scene that the protagonist says something about themselves. Now I wanted to bring another character in and have the protagonist who we know point them out, go, Hey, what's the matter? You're looking like a sticker, like your sticker is stuck on a floor somewhere. Um, and what I intended with that description is that the other person, whoever they are, they look like they're not having a good time. They look like they're sad. They're despondent. And I just thought of that description because I felt like, you know, when you're a kid, I shouldn't say when you, when I was a kid, I remember stickers were so important to me. And I had, I had like a notebook where I put stickers in it and I just looked at the stickers and they were just so precious to me. And I just thought of how sad I would be, how sad a kid would be if their precious sticker was stuck on a floor somewhere and they couldn't get it off. So that's, that's the kind of <laughs> um, sad feeling I wanted to express. And I wanted the protagonist to um, say a simile that's, that um, evokes a feeling of them knowing what it's like to be around kids. Maybe they're a parent, maybe they're a grandparent, maybe they had kids in their life. And here's the thing most of the things you as a songwriter put in your songs your listeners not going to pick up on that's just the name of the game but also what's fun about writing songs is putting all these descriptors in there and these little easter eggs just for yourself and kind of expand the world you're building if only just for yourself even if no one else in the world gets what you're talking about and i think that's the real fun about songwriting. Okay, I'll move on because this is getting real long already. Hui, where were we? Um, hey, what's the matter? Looking like your sticker is stuck on a floor somewhere. Did you go and make, make promises you can't keep? Well, when you break them, they break you right back. Amateur mistake. Our first F minor 
in our only F minor in the song. And again, with a simple song like this, there's not a lot of tools you have to um, bring something unexpected to the listener. So, oh, that's a new chord that we haven't heard before and it kind of, hopefully, again, um, brings the listener back in, gets their attention again. And then that serves also to make the listener think, oh, I know what's gonna happen next. After this, the song is gonna go back to that melody. Da, 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 da. But instead, we do a little twister -roo. You can take it from me. And then they break you right back. And the choir sings that, and by now the listener um, already knows that there's a choir. A choir is just laying in wait in the background. Um, and so it's no longer a jump scare, so the choir can, I don't know, sing more than once. So I have them sing three times in a row. And since, you know, this is a bigger part of the song, we're already halfway through the song. Mm. So I have the choral parts be a little bit more elaborate, have a little bit more flourish. And with this song, I wanted the choir to repeat the parts that I wanted the listener to hear the most. So for this, in the beginning it was family, that sentiment. Here it's, they break you right back. When you break promises, the protagonist has learned that they always break you right back. So, they break you right back three times in a row. Or actually it's twice and then ooh, and then we quiet down. The other instruments, by the way, that you know are piano and bass, they go away again and we go back to just acoustic guitar and vocals. And for the third verse, I wanted to have the protagonist say what they really that wanted light. to say all along. Um, now that we've gotten the description of the scene out of the way, we've introduced the protagonist, who they are. Now I want to quiet down and have the protagonist say what they really, really wanted to say. So, when I'm bent over wishing it was over, making all the right. For that last line about the devil and God, um, I wanted I wanted the listener to have the option to take two main meanings away, depending on what they want out of the song. I mean, of course, you can take even more meanings from it. You know, you might think of meanings I've never thought about, and that's beautiful. But for for my intentions anyway, it was one of two options, a positive or a negative, a pessimistic or optimistic option. The optimistic ending is that the protagonist is saying, well, when I'm bent over and I'm at rock bottom, I try to remember that the wrath of the devil I'm feeling right now, the suffering I'm feeling right now was also given to the devil by God because God created the devils as well. So maybe all this suffering I'm feeling has some sort of meaning or some sort of thing I can learn from, something positive from it. So that's option one. And then pessimistic option is that, again, the protagonist is bent over and at rock bottom and kind of making vows to God, like, I won't do this again, yada, yada. But then it occurs to the protagonist, maybe the suffering was also given, given to me by God via the devil. So maybe 
God intended this suffering for me. And maybe there's no point in asking God for help because God wants me to suffer. <laughs> so, I don't know, those are, there are various interpretations that you can take from it and I wanted it that way. I wanted the listener to take whatever they need from it. So after we've spoken about God and the devil and the like, I wanted to end a bit churchy. So we have the chorus go. And we close out with that. And that's the song. And thank you for watching this incredibly long video. I hope at least maybe 5% of you watching this got something out of it. Again, I'm sorry it got real nitty gritty. But thank you for listening. Oh yeah, cool. I did a, a deep dive uh, into the lyrics before I hit record. And I wasn't sure. So then I went to Genius to get some of the annotation. It still left me a little empty. So when I saw this video, I'm like, well, let's do a deep dive. Uh, those of you that are still on here, thanks. And that's it. We'll wrap it up. As we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia.